So uh, this is a talk about uh, Tunnel VR, which is a new um, way of drawing up caves in VR in 3D, um, which is probably the way that everyone out in the real world would like to see their caves, as you can see from this bit of uh, footage from some local TV of a caving trip where they didn't use any of our survey drawings. They actually drew their own sort of 3D thing back in 1976 because that's what people need to see uh, where, where caves go. Uh, about me, I used to do um, some computer games programming a very, very long time ago. I've done lots of uh, 3D programming, uh, but most importantly, I've spent <coughs> since 1998 writing uh, this 2D cave drawing software called Tunnel X. And over the pandemic, I learned about VR programming. So the main points of this talk are that uh, 2D cave surveys, as we normally do them, are obsolete. It's quite a bold statement, but we're going to go with that. And that VR, virtual reality, makes drawing in 3D easy and it's kind of fun to do. And the results are what people really want. So uh, I'll, if we just go back to how things are now, or, or at least, uh, here are two cave surveys off of uh, the Wikipedia page for cave surveying. So I didn't select them. Uh, one from 1908 and one from 2008. So this is 100 years of evolution. And as you can see, in about 100 years, uh, pretty much things got a little bit more ugly. We still can't draw the stuff about the caves on the caves. We have to write words like crawls and um, uh, you know places and passages that can't be drawn in, 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 in the drawing, which is kind of showing a, a, a shortcoming of the uh, techniques. There's also recently uh, this technology of LiDAR scanning, which has become more prevalent and you can uh, scan every year. Of course, it's getting half the price and you can scan billions of points in any sort of cave very quickly. But these images don't look any good unless you actually show them in the movie, movie view. As you can see from this one, it doesn't look any good when I take a screenshot of it. Now, <clears throat> um, here's similar as an analogy of what these cave scan, uh, these LiDAR scans are, is they're like a satellite image of the ground uh, with sort of trees, shadows, and all kinds of clutter. But um, <coughs> we'd like to turn this into a map. The computer can't translate it into a map, uh, you know, which is what we actually use to get around and find our way to this conference. Um, we use these maps, and how are these made? Well, normally what you do is you stick them up on uh, a web page, and people trace them up. They trace up the bits that the people know are important to us, not what a computer thinks is important, but we know, we know are important, like roads and things, and and understanding the structure of the of, of roads which might go along tree lines or something, even though they won't be in the picture. So there's dealing with all the uh, mistakes, uh, the things that you can't see in the image. Now <clears throat> we we get on to two uh, D cave drawing, which is uh, similar to this. Um, is there's sort of two main packages for drawing up cave surveys in, 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 on, on, on paper. Uh, one is Therian, it's probably the most popular. I call this a para uh, I had a slide explaining these, the difference, technical differences, but we didn't have to go, we can't go into this now. Um, but Therian's a parametric model and, a, and Tunnel X is a direct model, which means you just edit the final result and keep editing it until uh, you get what you want. Now, in 3D, uh, a lot of the technical problems that I had to solve and the people writing Therian had to solve disappear because uh, in 3D, the, the drawings don't overlap. There's no mismatch between uh, one passage going across a place and another passage going across the place and us having to move one across the other because in 3D, nothing goes into the same, unless it's the same place, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, hit itself. So uh, the main point here is 3D is easier, not only to um to, to for people to see but easier to manage and draw in the first place so if we get back to um they uh <coughs> right moving on to another I issue is how are the way how are we going inter to interact with this 3d so let's just go through two common human computer interfaces that we've been using for quite many decades we have the 2d screen keyboard mouse and cursor which a lot of us are already still using more recently has come in in the last couple of decades was the touchscreen uh, phone with its uh, uh, positioning. That's also basically genuinely new computer interface, which we've also got used to. It's completely different. Um, <clears throat> and I'm um, putting it to you that the VR is uh, 
probably the next generation, the new human computer interface. It's not going to replace the other two, but it's a new one that we can all use. And it's uh, gone through some rapid evolution beginning in 2015 when it was a, a tethered device with remote base stations and external computer and a, a lot of setup to now basically a mobile one that just can operate in a single <clears throat> or just on a single headset and you've got these special joysticks which uh, have evolved and come to this standard uh, format um, and in the future it's evolving faster than, 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 than we know and uh, we've got various different things coming on probably coming on, onto the market this year such as uh, <clears throat> ones with cameras on the front that pass the picture through. This one on the top right is for watching movies on a big screen. Uh, the Enreal glasses are, you can see through them, so you're no longer blindfolded, and everyone knows Apple is going to be coming out with something that's probably going to be great, but no one knows what it is. And then everyone's going to use them in the same way as everyone uses smartphones. So the challenges with VR, <coughs> when you're trying to do something in it, is they're very difficult to teach because you're, student is blindfolded and you can't see what they're seeing and it's a, a, a bit of a bit of a disaster because normally when we teach how to use complicated user interfaces we both stand over the screen and the guy scratches his head and I can point out what, what he needs to click and we can both see what we're doing so what I had to do in in my uh, cave drawing program which is just as complicated as anything as complicated as the 2d problem is I had to make a second player in it so I could watch someone I'm teaching how to draw. And, and, and then it turns out you can actually draw stuff together because uh, you can see each other and you can see what each other's looking at, which uh, means we can actually collaborate. So very quickly for the rest of the talk, we're going to go through the components of this structure, which is how I put it together. So first thing is uh, it's, everything's based on cross sections, uh, polygonal, cross-section on a vertical plane, basically, plotted like so. Maybe we can f put splines in there, but it's not really important. Um, then uh, these, these polygonal things can actually be uh, cut through of laser scans, which are also, as I said, very prevalent now, more than you think. This one is a, is a scan from an iPhone 12 Pro. So a lot of people have the equipment to scan hundreds of meters of cave without any hassle. And what you do is you put a cross-section in it and then we can trace it up and, and, and carry on. <clears throat> now, uh, I have to remind you that we're not trying to make a very high-definition version of the cave. You've got low uh, fidelity and then the middle, which I'm trying to do, which is kind of like more or less the 3D shape as is and the important bits drawn in. And, but we're not like filling in every single corner and crevice of the um, stalactites or something because it never ends. There's definitely this middle ground that I'm just trying to stick to. So what you then have are, when you've got two cross sections, you can join them by a series of lines, turn it into a tube and set with different materials along the tube. <clears throat> One of the interesting things is uh, you discover that uh, you, you have, uh, have to decide what are we what, what kind of material we're going to stick on this uh, on these walls because in our 2d drawings all we ever did for a wall was just stick a black line no matter what was happening or you know whether it was a, a rock or a side of a canal or a, a climb or boulders or something it was always just this black red black line now when you actually have to draw it we now can decide are we going to fill this with a scallop wall or is it mud or is it solid sandstone or something you know new problem so tubes uh, can have extra points in between to add a little bit of crookedness. Um, so they're not just turning out just a series of pipes. You can make them as, as crinkly as necessary. And then there's two types of junctions. The first type is where one tube sort of splits into two tubes, like in a wide uh, a, a fork, like so. I hope that's obvious. Um, it's much easier to see in 3D. Uh, and the uh, second type of junction is where you have a window in the side of one of the tubes which goes off into another tube. And between these two, you can pretty much make uh, any shape that you need. There might be some shapes that can't quite do or you have to contrive a shape, but uh, <clears throat> this, this is dealing with about 95% of the cave. Uh, <clears throat> more recently, I've uh, turned out the, the you can have water levels. The water levels are actually not horizontal throughout the cave. Um, otherwise it wouldn't flow, mm -hmm. but um, we, we can, you can stick sort of transparent things in there. 
and uh, we can also draw in ropes in 3D. So you're, the way you did the rigging around a complicated um, pitch series uh, with various relays can be put in and drawn in in this sort of diagrammatic way. And the lengths that come out from it will, should, should be the right lengths. Then finally, there's boulders that uh, can also be sketched out in any kind of network of points, and you can make a crinkly boulder or or something that's uh, the shape of a um, <coughs> a garrow pool or whatever you find. You can uh, you can put these together fairly quickly. And uh, finally, we've got signs on some of the uh, places because you don't want to put gigantic signs like you do in two D. You have to just put little signs which you can see when you're uh, like road signs which you can see when you go around them. And uh, we also have a place to put the photos. So normally the problem is uh, with photos is you can just stick a few on the side of a survey and they just be about the size of a postage stamp or <coughs> you have a big directory of photos where you don't know where they are. But here we can put them all exactly in the right place. And so as you wander down the passage, you can actually get a picture of, of, of what it's like there. And uh, after, it's, after that's all done, we can export the whole thing and it, it'll work on the phone. So uh, uh, on a phone, you can then have, uh, I've always had this problem in, in the, the tunnel program with elevation because there never was a good answer to how to deal with it. I think I've got the good answer now is that you have to have something which can rotate in 3D uh, and you can see it from different angles depending on what part of the cave you're looking at. And there's my solution to uh, uh, elevations. So in summary, 3D uh, VR cave tech is uh, better than 2D and we can do, be doing it today. We don't need to wait, at, wait, wait for uh, any future. So that's about it. Um, ask me for a demo anytime in the next few days.